Good morning and welcome to our seventh session of the Handwriting Challenge. You've done seven sessions, well done, or at least you've done six, you're about to have done seven. We're going to follow the same structure today. Warm-up exercises first, then our letter formation, and then when you've done all of that, you're rewarded with your fun activity to improve your fine motor skills. And today, just to give you a little bit of a taste, we are going to be making this 3D scene or one that looks very much like this. And there's lots of things involved in this that help your fine motor skills. So let's get started. We're going to do two warm up exercises today and they both have something to do with circles. First of all, we're going to do our wrist circles. We have done this one before. Let's see if you can remember it. Hands out in front of you at shoulder level. Tuck your thumb inside and make a fist. And now we're going to do circles with our wrists. So we go round, I think we'll do them outside first. Two, three, four, five, six. And let's go to the inside first. One, two, three, four, five, six, and relax. And our second exercise is going to be circles with our fingers. So put your elbow on the table and just relax your arm, rest the other hand beside you, and we're going to make circles with our fingers and thumbs. So stretch your hand out sideways on your thumb towards you. Make a circle with your first finger and your thumb, then stretch the thumb back towards you. Middle finger and your thumb, back towards you. Ring finger, thumb towards you. Little finger, thumb towards you. Let's do that again. First finger circle, stretch out. Middle finger. Out. Ring finger, stretch out. Little finger, stretch out. Let's see if we can do it again more quickly. First finger, stretch. Middle finger, stretch. Ring finger, stretch. Little finger, stretch. Rest that hand, lift up your other hand sideways on, thumb towards you. Make a circle with your first finger, stretch. Middle finger, oh, my other fingers bend when I do that, and back. Ring finger, and back. Little finger and back. And again, first finger and back. Middle finger and back. Ring finger and back. And little finger and back. See if you can do it more quickly. Each finger gets its turn. And let's see if we can do it with both hands together. So, concentrate hard. Stretch in between. your hands a shake. We have now practiced 22 letters in this writing challenge. Do you know how many letters there are in the alphabet? That's right, there's 26. So if we've done 22, how many have we got left to do today? That's right, we've got four. And we have got the loopy letters left. So today we're going to get loopy. We are starting off with the letter J. So that starts a bit like an I, it has a leading stroke, it goes down because it's got a descender and then it loops in front and comes up ready for the next letter. Go back and do a dot just like you do with an I. Let's do another one, leading stroke, down because it's got a descender, loop in front and then get ready for the next letter. Find a dot and another one, leading stroke, down, go round in front, loop back ready for the next letter and do a dot. Have a little go at those. Pause and practice the letter J. The next loopy letter we're going to try is Y. So get ready. It starts like a U and then it has its loopy tail. So leading stroke, go down, make your little cut. Go down, descend below the line and loop like that. Ready for the next one. Leading stroke, make a little cut. Get ready for your descender. Go down below the line, loop back. 
like that. And again, leading straight, make a little cut, go down the below the line and then make a monkey tail. I can't remember which teacher it is, but one teacher at George Spicer calls that a monkey tail and I quite like that. Have a practice. Pause and practice the letter Y. The next letter we're going to practice today is the letter F. Now I found something out about F today. It's a three quarters high letter, but it's also got a descender, so it's the tallest letter in total that we have. I didn't know it was three quarters high before. That's a new thing that I've found out. It's like the, the letter T, it doesn't go straight up to the line. It goes nearly up, but not quite. So let's watch carefully. I think this is the most tricky letter we have in George Spicer writing. Leading stroke, go three quarters high, then loop backwards and come straight down. And then it's got a monkey tail like a Y on the exit stroke. Let's do another one. Leading stroke, three quarters high, straight down, out behind, and another one. Draw it in the air in front of you. Leading stroke, quite tall but not right up to the line. Straight down, kick out behind, exit stroke, ready for the next letter. And another one. Leading stroke, straight down, kick out behind, and loop, ready for the next letter. You have a try of that now. Pause and practice the letter F. And our last letter is, can you work it out? What haven't we done yet? It's got a loop in it. It's the letter K. That has a tall ascender, it doesn't have a descender. So first of all, we do the leading stroke. We come all the way down again halfway back up and then it goes a bit like it's going to be a tunnel letter but you come back then down and exit stroke and another one leading stroke straight down go halfway back up like you're doing an H come over but curl in go down and exit stroke and another one leading stroke straight down halfway back up like you're doing an H over loop in, go down and exit stroke. Some children write these like this. It's the right formation, but what letter does that look like? Yes, it looks like a capital R, so that's very confusing if your K's look like that. You need to remember the important thing is you only go halfway back up before you do the loop. Watch once more, leading stroke, straight down, only go halfway back up, do your loop, down and exit stroke. Have a try at those. Pause and practice the letter K. Now most of these letters don't come together in words. I can't think of any word with two J's together. But just to get the feel into our hands, I'm going to practice joining two up. And this does get a bit tricky with the loops. So watch carefully, leading stroke, down, loop into the next one leading stroke straight down loop then you would be ready for the next one and you'd go back and put two j's if they did come together let's do it again leading stroke straight down loop get ready for the next one leading stroke straight down loop and go back and put two dots above each of them have another go leading stroke down, loop, straight down, loop, exit stroke, go back and do the dots. Let's try joining two Y's now. So start with the little cup, go down, do your monkey tail, lead into the next one, make a little cup, go down, do your monkey tail. Have another go, leading stroke, little cup go down, make the monkey tail, leading stroke, little cup, go down, make the monkey tail. Try again, leading stroke, little cup, go down, make your monkey tail, leading stroke, little cup, go down, make your monkey tail. And this is a really tricky one, F. We're going to try and join two, and this is the one I can think of lots of words that do have two Fs, or at least some words, like, um, let me think, suffer. <laughs> 
I'm going to suffer while we try and join two S. Do you know what suffer means? Maybe you can find it out if you don't know. Right, we are going to write two S together. So leading stroke, remember it's three quarters high. Then it's got a straight line descending down and then do your monkey tail and you're ready to start the next one. Three quarters high, straight down, back behind. Actually makes a really nice pattern if you join lots of those together, but it is really complicated. Watch again. Leading stroke, three quarters high, straight down, kick out behind, do your monkey tail, lead into the next one, three quarters high, straight down, kick out behind. Have another go, this is tricky. Lead in stroke, three quarters high, straight down, kick out behind. Ready to lead into the next one, three quarters high, straight down, kick out behind. And there you are. And now let's try two Ks together. Remember, the bottom bit of the K is only half size. It has a taller fender and there has to be a gap between there and where the leaky bit is. Ready, lead in stroke, straight down. Up, go round, tuck in, go down, out with your next leading stroke. Leading stroke, straight down, halfway up, loop, down, and exit stroke. And again, leading stroke, straight down, halfway back up, loop in, go down. Leading stroke to the next letter, straight down all the way, halfway back up, go round as it's going to be an H, it loops in. try at those. Pause and practice joining your letters. So now we're going to write down all the letters that we've practiced so far, which is actually all the letters in the alphabet. So we're going to write them down in the order that we've practiced them. To start with, there were the ones that started with a C formation. So there was C, then it was A, then D, G, O, Q, S, E, and the ones with straight lines, I, L, T, X, Z, R, Z, W, tell me the letters next, N, M, H, V, P, and U, and then the loop loop ones we've done today, J, Y, S, and K. And now we're going to practice writing some words using J, Y, S, and K. The first word we're going to write is very short and it uses S. We're going to write the word I, two sounds, I. So that's I and S. We're going to write that taking our pen off. Watch carefully. I. Three quarters high F, straight down, kick out behind you, exit stroke, and dot the I. Do that again. Lead in and down for the I. Three quarters high F, straight down, kick out behind, exit stroke, dot the I. One more. Lead in stroke down, into the F, straight down, kick out behind, exit stroke, dot the I. Okay? Now we're going to practice writing a word with Y. I'm going to write yes, three sounds, yes. So that's Y, E, S, all together before we take our pen off. Ready? Lead in stroke, give it a little tuck, go down, little fender, monkey tail, into the E, and then into the S. Don't forget your exit stroke. One more time. Lead in stroke, make a little cup, go down, make a monkey tail, into the E, and into the S. Stroke, make a little cup, go down, blow down the descender, monkey tail, into the E, into the S, come back and wiggle round, and exit stroke. Blake.
and now I think we'll write a word that uses J. I don't often write words with lowercase j's in them. Let's write jug. Three sounds, jug. So that's J-U-G that we have to write before we take our pen off. Ready? J. And into the G, which also has a monkey tail. When you have two monkey tails, they should match. They should both come the same distance below the line. Go back and dot the J. Let's do another one. Leaving strokes for J, straight down, loop forwards into the monkey tail. Get rid of your U, get rid of the cup. And then into your G, which starts with a C shape and then it picks up into G with a monkey tail. Go back and dot your J. And last of all, we're going to practice a word with K in it. I'm going to put K on the beginning. Let's write key. Two sounds, K, E, and it's the E that you spell E-Y. So we're going to write three letters, K, E, Y, before we take our pen off. Ready? Leading stroke for K, towards our sender. All the way down, halfway back up, make that little loop. Down and into the E, which is the same size as the bottom bit of the K. And then into your Y, which is our other letter we've been practicing with the cup. And like a monkey tail, makes it stroke. Let's do that again. Leading stroke, straight down, halfway back up, loop, go down, and into your E, and into your Y, get rid of the cup, and down to make a monkey tail, and it makes it stroke. Have a go at those. Pause and practice writing if, yes, jug, and key. Now I'm going to show you how to make a 3D winter scene like this one. To start off, all you need is two pieces of paper. One piece of paper has to be the half size of the other one. If you start with a really big piece of paper, just make sure the other piece is half the size. If you put it on, you can see this is twice the size of that one. It's good to, if you've got black paper to use it for the background. If you haven't, you could colour it in with some crayons. So that's going to be my background. That's going to be the bit that's a concertina fan. So let's start with making a concertina. This is really good for your fingers. Bend up the first bit. I reckon that's about two centimetres, the bit that I'm bending up. So bend it up, turn it over, and then carefully bend the same amount so that edge goes along your fold and squash your fold. Next step, turn it over. Bend it up again so that it's the same size and turn it over and bend it up again. Turn it over and bend it up again. It's important you turn it over each time or else you'll just get a piece of paper all rolled up and it won't be a concertina. Turn it over, do the same thing again. Line it up, press the edges with your fingers to make the creases nice and sharp. Turn it over, hold it again, it's like making a fan. And turn it over and fold it again. Now there isn't quite enough to fold down again and I want the top bit to be slightly longer. So I'm going to leave that like that. The next step is to fold this in half. So take that edge over to there, press it down, and you should have a crease in the middle, doesn't matter if it's a bit messy, but press it as tightly as you can to make it quite sharp. Now we're going to join that part of the fan to that part. So I'm just going to put glue on one side and then I'm going to press those two bits together. So open up your glue, spread it down one side, a nice line with it. edges together and squeeze them with your fingers. If you put your fingers in the fold like that, squeeze it, make sure that it's stuck nice and securely because we're going to be pulling it back and we want that bit to hold together. Press it that side as well. Right, now we need to attach the fan to the background. I like to have a rounded edge to my background scene. It's up to you whether you do this or not, but the way to do it is 
fold this but don't crease it because we don't want a crease down the middle of it put the two corners together just get some scissors and round it off like that there we are so it's rounded at the edge you don't have to do that i just prefer it now we're going to stick this to the background so grab the glue again i do one side then the other so put glue over that larger piece that we had left and then match it carefully so the concertina's at the bottom and that's at the top the bit that overhangs match it so it goes to the edge of the paper a bit like the pages in a book and then spread print stick over this bit open up like that. This bit should still be flat more or less. There's a bit of a crease there where I press but apart from that that's nice and flat coming around and now we're ready to add our houses and whatever else we want to add to it. Now I used coloured paper. It's actually paper that had been painted to cut out the shapes to go on my winter scene but you don't need to use coloured paper. If you've got some coloured paper like I've got some here you can use it but you can draw pictures and colour them in and cut them out and use those on your scene if you don't have coloured paper. I'm going to show you how to do it without any colours because sometimes I think it's quite effective just to use black and white. So I'm going to draw my pictures and cut them out. I'm using card because I want them to be a little bit stiffer but if you don't have card just do them on paper. So I want some Christmas, Christmassy trees, fir trees and I'm just going to draw them very simply. I think I'll draw a bit of a branch on them. A few branches. A nice simple shape for cutting out. I think I want a few of those. Just more slightly different shapes. few more of those. I'm also going to do a house. A very simple house shape. The chimney. drawn all your pictures you need to cut them out. So once they're all cut out, you just need to decide which of the things you want in the background and which you want in the foreground to make your 3D scene. So I'm going to start off by putting some of the trees in the background. So I just quickly rub some glue onto them. I'll put that one over there. Press it on. For the background, I'm actually sticking all of it. Another one there. I'll save some of the other trees to go further forward. So now I'm going to put my houses on. Um, I'm just going to put a bit of glue on the back because I want this one to come further forward. I'm not sticking it on the back. I'm going to stick it there a little bit higher so it shows more. You can see the house is in front of the trees. Um, I think I'll put 
the other house at the other side. Just a little bit of glue along the bottom edge, not right up. And we'll put that between the two trees. We've got two houses, more in the foreground, the trees in the background. Now I think I want to add the snowman. I'm just going to try and see where I'd like it. I think I might put it here. So that's a little bit of glue on the bottom bit of the snowman. And just pop it on the ridge in front of the house. And then I've got my fox who's out prowling on a dark winter night. I think I'll put him over here. So a bit of glue on his paws. On it goes. And got food he'll find to eat. Um, and then maybe a few more trees around a bit further forward. Just put it on the trunks. That can go there. It's behind the snowman beside the house. Uh, should we put this one? Maybe that one can go beside that tree. <laughs> beside the house. We've got one left. I might just put that one. Mm, let me think. I think I might put it there beside the house. And you can add whatever you like to your winter scene. You could put some children playing. You could make it a daytime scene and do a blue background. You can make it your own picture however you want. You can use as many colours as you want. I quite like this one without colours. But I did like the other one that I made with colours. So have a play around. See what you can make. Have fun.